Hey, this is a gift project for a Seahawks fan. And what it is is a piece of a scrap piece of walnut, rough cut walnut, uh, that uh, you can kind of see inside here is the dark area for the the heartwood, and then the outside part that's kind of the closer to the bark, the outside of the tree. It's called the sapwood, and it's got a lighter color to it. And then inside here, what we've got is inlaid pieces of maple that um, are, are, you know, the 12th man uh, icon for Seahawks. And, yeah, so all this material is really just scrap that I had around. Here some pieces of other, you know, rough cut ends of, of walnut. And uh, they've been dried. There's also these... Uh, little strips here of maple that these happen to be about eighth inch thick thickness doesn't really matter too much <coughs> excuse me um, but yeah they, these guys here are just stuff that I had around um, the finish on the piece is uh, clear lacquer it's just some you know a spray can but it actually turns out really well it's a rust-oleum clear lacquer and so let's see so I, I kind of uh, I sprayed the back side of it as well which I don't know if that's going to come across very well but the back side almost looks better than the front side this is the the uh, the outside of the tree it's just underneath the uh, the bark is what this is on this side but that really turned out good on the back side of that thing even thinking about what kind of projects I can do with the back side of the tree because that turned out so well. So the idea with this is you, you can, for the inlay, is you can create a, a pattern, you can hand sketch it, you can print it out on a computer. Uh, the idea is just get it down on a piece of paper for a step, you know, what you want to do the inlay. And then you take the, the piece that you're going to inlay, this eighth inch maple in this case, and you'll 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 apply the the pattern that you sketched out to to the the, the part you want to inlay. And the method I use is I use uh, this masking tape and this stick glue. Uh, you know, it's just like a children's stick glue. And what I'll do is I'll I'll put masking tape down over the piece that I want to inlay first, and then I'll put a layer of this uh, stick glue down. And then I'll add the paper that has the pattern that I want to cut out. The reason for the tape is that it's just easy to remove after you're done. You just peel the tape, the tape off and you're, you're not left with paper or um, glue to deal with to have to sound off. You know? So it's, it's just really a time saver to use the tape. It's kind of the way to go with this. But once you get it to that point where you've got the pattern glued to the piece that you want to do, then you'll want to cut that pattern out with, uh, like say, I use a bandsaw to cut it out. And one of the tricks that you can do to cut that out is, uh, on the like say if this is the top of the bandsaw and your blade is like right here, what you can do is put a tilt on your, your bandsaw table. And what that'll do is it will create, like say this is going to be the top side of your surface, of your inlay, which is important. There will be a top and bottom side, uh, but it will put a little um, angle on the uh, the cut, you know. And so, what you'll do is the, the bottom side of the uh, let me see, let me zoom in. But the bottom side of your inlay piece will be slightly narrower than the top. And what that'll do is that'll make it just that much more easier to get it into the pockets that we, we router out of the, 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 the work piece over here. And uh, it's a little trick that you can do to get it to be inlaid easier is to put a little angle on it. But you do, when, you, when you do angle the table, you have to really watch out the position where you have the, the inlay piece that you're cutting out. In other words, like if this is your 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 symbol or your number that you're wanting to cut out. You'll always want to have the piece that you're cutting out on 
like say in this case the right hand side of the blade you don't want to put it over on the left hand side of the blade because now because your angle is like this now you're going to you're you're going to cut a notch out of the piece like this and so now the top side of your piece is going to be narrower than the bottom side of your piece you don't want that it's better to just cut it straight uh, if you if you really uh, if you really have to have it on that side. You set the table back so it's straight and then you can cut the piece that's on that side. Anyways, so yeah, you want to start out with your, your work piece being flat so you have to do, you know, you have to sand it down when I use orbital, orbital sander. Uh, makes it real quick work of getting that flat. And then what you'll do to cut out the, the corresponding uh, grooves in the work piece, what I do is use the router and what I've got set up in here is a a quarter inch straight bit but there's lots of other bits that you can use depending upon what you're trying to achieve I just use a quarter inch straight bit in this case and I'll set the depth to be approximately the thickness of your your inlay piece and it really doesn't have to be exact uh, some people try to make it you know exact but really after you get this thing inlaid in there and glued and you let it dry the position of that thing is going to move a little bit there's going to be glue thickness involved uh, you know, you might be a little bit off with your depth of your of your uh, your router, and either way, if it's either higher, if if the inlay is too high, well then you're you're going to sand down the inlay a little bit. If you, if the depth is too deep and your inlay is inside there a little bit, well then you're going to be sanding down the walnut. So I don't really worry about the depth too much. It just has to be close, um, and you know. Ultimately, you're only going to see a flat surface here, right? So it doesn't really matter how deep or how thick the inlay is, you know, going to be. You're only going to see the outside surface. So, yeah. So, yeah. Once you've got the, uh, the these the pattern cut out in your inlay piece, well, then what you, what I do is I'll 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 stick the inlay piece onto the work piece and get it positioned where you want it, and then I'll take you know a really fine mechanical pencil uh, wherever. I I don't know where I have that, but you know, a, a, a sharp pencil, mechanical pencil, and you'll draw out the, the, the location that you want onto the workpiece. So you're kind of transferring it onto the workpiece. And I don't know where my mechanical pen there it is right there. So a nice uh, fine tipped mechanical pencil gives you some nice consistent lines uh, when you draw it out. And one of the things about what I mentioned about angling the the, uh, the 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 bandsaw when you're cutting out the inlay is that you'll want to have of course you know the top side out of when you're drawing this out and so when when we had the the bottom of the inlay piece just a little bit narrower right then now when you trace around that your 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 pattern that you you're transferring to the workpiece is just a little bit smaller than what it actually needs to be and that's perfect because what will end up happening is that you have to uh, kind of fine tune the fit of the, the inlay piece into the pocket that you have in the work piece. It's, it's just not going to come out perfect every time. You're going to have to do a little sanding and um, get, that, get that in there. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, so once you've got that pattern cut out, then you're then, uh, per, sorry, uh, pattern drawn onto the work piece, then you're ready to. Um, router it out and for this piece it's got kind of a weird shape to it you know it's like a like a half pyramid type shape again I was kind of going for like a mountain thing you know um, up here in Washington we have lots of mountains and so it makes for a really kind of unusual shape piece so I I made this kind of this, this little fixture down here to try and hold the uh, the piece while I was you know working on it and it just kind of fits in here like this uh, so it fits into kind of like a little pocket that kind of holds it. Another thing you could do is, you know, try to drill into the piece and uh, hold it. I found that this little pocket worked okay for this usage, so I didn't really have to drill anything uh, into the piece to get it to stay. But you want to have a nice uh, a, a surface that can be, you know, Stir, uh, can hold it, its position and not move around too much, something flat, because you're going to be coming o over with router, you know, so you want to you have the, the work piece in a, uh, 
uh, a consistent position. And you'll also want to have some really good lighting um, shining into onto the workpiece because with the router going and you know sawdust flying, you'll want to be able to really see where that line is that you need to trace out. You know, and, and <clears throat> what I'll do is. Um, I think there's lots of ways to do this, but what I, I, I like to do is just uh, start in the middle of the part that you want to router out and get all the areas that are easy, you know, that, that you can just go quick, you know, on the inside parts of it. Just get all that out of there, and then you can come back carefully and run a um, run around the perimeter, which is a really key part, you know, and uh, take your time and get that routed out as, as you know accurately as you can as just a little time saver um, let's see so yeah once you got that all all routed out to the line uh, then what you want to do is um, uh, inevitably there, there's going to be some sharp corners right to these these features and what you'll do there is you'll come back with like a little um, like a, a sharp exacto knife or uh, utility knife and you'll you'll cut out the corners uh, areas you know to get them to match up with the line because you, you just won't be able to get those with the router so that's kind of a manual process but it will go fairly quick to get all those little corners cut out once you're to that point then you'll want to take your inlays piece you know that you've cut out and you'll what I do what I do is start at a corner of it and um, make sure start at the corner and try to get the fit get it to fit in the corner but while you're doing that you're also looking at the other end of the inlay piece to make sure that it's properly aligned so you don't you don't want to um, start here and then have your work or your inlay piece shifted a little bit right that's going to really mess things up so you, you could start in a corner and get it to fit you know of course you know you could either sand the you know the inside part of the workpiece or you could sand the outside part of your inlay piece to get it to fit you know and um, what I, I like to do is just kind of sand the inside part to get it um, to get any small burrs or anything like that off there but uh, I like to work with the inlay piece because if possible because it's a lot thinner material and it's easier to get to it's easier to sand you can almost use the utility uh, exacto knife or utility knife to cut out parts of it if you're really careful but uh, generally just sanding is probably the better way to go so yeah so you want to you know make sure this end of it is referenced you know correctly as you're working through the piece to get it to fit and so you're kind of just folding it in to the piece so once you've got the the inlay pieces to fit and uh, you know, you don't want to, of course, uh, push the inlay pieces in all the way, you know, when you're doing the fitting, because then they're going to be really tough to get them out. But once you're, once you're confident that they're, they're going to fit, you will want to, you know, go in with your wood glue, add a bunch of wood glue. I like to add excessive wood glue to both the, uh, the wood uh, workpiece side and the inlay side, the back of the inlay side. There you want to, and, and along the perimeter of, you know, both pieces, right? What you want to do is get that really heavily glued. You'll add the inlay piece in there, and glue will push out up through the the the, out, the outside perimeter, uh, you know, between the two pieces. And you really, you want that. You want to be able to have that glue push up. What I'll do is I, I won't wipe all that excess glue off. What I'll do is I'll come, come over it with a... Uh, with the sanding block, either the, the orbital sander or a sanding block, and then start working, let's start sanding that glue into, uh, what it'll do is it will sand that glue into the little gaps that are around the perimeter of, of this, because it's going to be tough to, to get it perfect, get a perfect fit, but when you sand the, over that glue, what it'll do is it'll tend to push the, 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 the sawdust into the little gaps around the perimeter of the of the work of the workpiece and the in the inlay part, so it will kind of seal those little little gaps. And it's going to look like crap, you know, when you're done sanding it over it with that glue. The glue is just going to 
the sawdust is going to mix in and it's going to make this the maple look you know more like walnut you know but you know the next step after after doing that after of course letting it dry is uh you, you know you're you're going to go over the whole piece again you know and you're going to sand that top layer off you're going to sand all that excess glue off and then you'll get right back down into you know what you want to see with the the <clears throat> the maple um one other thing i forgot to mention was that you you after you you've sanded that you can actually go over it as well with your fingers and uh try to kind of almost like uh, force the glue and the sawdust back into those little cracks or little gaps and you know hopefully they aren't too you know too big of gaps but if they are you know you can use this this technique to kind of fill those in and it'll still look good so yeah don't don't get discouraged you know if when you're when you're uh, adding the inlay you know if, if it's not a perfect fit don't worry about it just keep going forward and use this technique about um, sanding the glue back into those little those little gaps so yeah after you're done with that, you've let it dry, you've come back over it with your orbital sander to, you know, your different grits, you know, to uh, get it nice and smooth. I, I like to get it down to about uh, 220 grit where it's nice and smooth. Then you'll do the final step, you know, which is adding your your finish on there. In this case, I just have this uh, Rust-Oleum clear lacquer. It's a, gl a gloss clear lacquer, and uh, it works really good. And this this is just sprayed. That's it. I didn't go any further than spraying it, but it it does have a pretty nice finish to it. And, you know, you could go to the next step uh, of uh, you know wet sanding it and polishing it. Uh, but um, and eventually I'm going to do a, a a project like that where I can get that that glass finish. You know, which you can get with even the spray can. Uh, but it's it's a lot of extra work to do it, and uh, for this project, I just decided to cut it off as a spray spray can. I want, one other thing also is I I did spray the back side of this thing too. That's the back side right there. Uh, I think the back side turned out just as good as the as the uh, the front side. In fact, I I'm uh, thinking about what kind of projects I can make with this being the the visible side here because this this by the way this is just the outside of the walnut tree the you know the, just, just under the bark and it, it it really looks nice with that clear lacquer on it it's very shiny and it's got just some really neat coloring to it um, you know this piece here is just a scrap piece of wood you know you've got these old uh, branches back when the tree was younger these little things it just kind of gives it a little character um, different kind of grain coloring, and uh, yeah, I really like this 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 project. Turned out really well. It's you know it's an example of of how you can take just scrap material that you have around and turn it into uh, something really unique and nice.